What's up, you beautiful collectors? This is the one and only Optobotomus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Toys R Us exclusive MPM3 Bumblebee, part of their Masterpiece movie series. Now, you may be asking, where's number one and two? Well, Takara Tomy released one and two many years ago, but they were just repaints of the leader class Bumblebee and Starscream. This Bumblebee here, in cooperation with Hasbro, is a completely new figure and as i said will be at least here in the united states a toys r us exclusive for the package you got a really cool image of obviously bumblebee in his robot and his vehicle mode you got the transformers text here along the side you got a really cool image here celebrating 10 years of transformers you got the top section you just as masterpiece movie you got an image of bumblebee you got an image of bumblebee on the bottom it, it doesn't say nothing other than it was made in vietnam and then on the back of the package, again, you got a couple images here of his actual toy, some of his accessories, such as his flip down battle mask, articulated hands, and his removable stinger blaster. MPM3, as well as MPM4 Optimus Prime, is coming to us to celebrate, as I talked about, the 10 year anniversary of the Transformers live action movie franchise and really does give us some beloved characters such as Bumblebee and Optimus in truly a masterpiece style. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. And here he is, the masterpiece movie series, Bumblebee. I know I have been waiting a long time for this figure, and I know a lot of you have as well. And this figure, in my opinion, really does not disappoint. They have done a terrific job with this. And it really goes to show what having the ability to spend 10 years designing a figure, how that actually can benefit the toy. Now, as great as this figure is, he's not all that perfect. As you can see, he is designed to look how he did in the 2007 movie. Now, initially, that was a concept Camaro, but was then later put into production. And what a lot of people don't necessarily understand is the goldish yellow color that he had in the movie is not actually a color that you can get. That color was basically custom for the movie. So while this has a very nice canary yellow, it definitely doesn't have that movie accurate paint that we saw. This isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but this is more how real Camaros look. This is the color that we can only get. I vaguely remember reading somewhere that that actual shade of yellow is like trademarked or something by Ford. So they couldn't put it on production versions of the Camaro. So I wonder if that's the reasoning for going with this kind of canary yellow. It doesn't bother me that much, but I know some people would be put off a little bit by it. Something else that I'm noticing right away is that the actual rims are a much more kind of pewter color i guess it does have a nice reflection to it the paint job is phenomenal in them but they were a much more silver look in the film same with the actual uh, door handles you can see that on both sides they have that same kind of pewter color also uh, they are kind of elevated one thing that the, the movie really s sort of showed was that they were very smooth and flat to the actual door these you can kind of see like stick out a little bit and definitely have a more uh, three-dimensional kind of look again that's a lot more accurate to how it looks in a real car, but not so much how the concept one looked. You can see you got the nice Camaro uh, text right there. You also have that on the opposite side. Gorgeous paint detail with uh, the front. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a blue tint uh, kind of in here. It almost looks as if there's like a blue window or bluish tinted lens uh, for the higher headlights. It, it, you probably can't see it, but in hand, I can definitely see it. You got the fog lights in the bottom. You got the nice uh, Chevy logo right there. You got the very nice stripes coming across. Obviously, you got different highlights here for like turn signals and such. Come around to the back. Got a nice gold emblem back here for Chevy. You got the different colors for the tail lights. And then you do have a, a California license plate, but this one here says 4NZZ454. Now, that's not the actual license plate that he had in the movie. And that's another slight inaccuracy. But I mean, Overall, really, 
a, a stellar looking vehicle mode just about as perfect as you're going to get it uh, i also like how you got like this silver uh, he does have some die casts and these are die cast pieces that kind of sit out kind of like little exhausts although you you do see the exhaust pipes there and on the other side but uh, those are nice little touches as well now uh, for some comparisons I, I don't unfortunately have that human alliance one with me anymore uh, it, it's gone the way of the dodo it's been replaced by the battle blades bumblebee which i have customized and painted a little bit more to give it a more a dark of the moon kind of look but this is a, a deluxe class figure it's the battle blades one and then this is the deluxe class well, well specifically movie the best version but again it was uh, the dark of the moon version but uh, you can see uh, the uh, two deluxe figures and you can see just how much bigger uh, this new guy is uh, scale wise i i'd say he's maybe a large voyager or so not quite leader size but if you're gonna have this guy in your just movie display if you had like leader optimus you know voyager ratchet leader class ironhide he's gonna scale very well with those and really fit in just about perfectly but even here you can see that uh, the different yellows that they use for bumblebee this is a little bit more of an orangish yellow this is a little bit lighter of an orangish yellow whereas this one is a much brighter yellow have a weapon uh, you can't actually store it here on the underside of him looking at the bottom though you can see it actually kind of hides fairly well that he's a robot but his weapon is right here it's a little bit tricky to get into but uh, you got that it actually is his stinger cannon or something you just fold that around but uh, to store it you open it up and then you got these little prongs that stick out that you slot inside here and you want to make sure that the the fatter section goes towards this more gappy opening so you just fit those little prongs in there it's a little bit tricky to do and then you just fold this section down there and you got that weapon storage and you can see it doesn't well if you get it if i have it all the way up in there uh, and it doesn't hinder any of the, the rolling or anything i mean my table kind of hinders it because it's a little bit rounded but there is no scraping whatsoever and the actual wheels roll very very nicely so uh, weapon storage is really nice so he does have weapon storage in his the robot mode but it's a little bit lame one part that does kind of stink is because of how securely it does tab in i have noticed that i'm constantly kind of detaching it luckily it's just a little friction sort of tab you just put that in there and it's put back uh, very very nice and then you can see really nice silver paint throughout this entire weapon and then on the inside here actually a little bit of orange which does look really nice i'll flip him back over now one thing that's cool is uh coming back a little bit the transformation on this there are a lot of elements that are very familiar to us it is an involved transformation but it doesn't feel too kind of out of the norm for what we've gotten with other bumblebees first we're going to come around here to the side and kind of pull this uh, section away from this back section when you do that it'll also pull this piece out so kind of loosen all that up and then just kind of fold that out like that do that on this side as well loosen this entire bit and then fold that out just like that you can come around here to the back section and then detach this a little and you want to pull this middle piece it's a little bit tricky to get to kind of pull that apart and then you can separate this and pull this entire thing it'll detach all of this just like that come up so you can see a little bit so fold this piece up and then you can take this front windshield fold this up and this will actually collapse onto the hood of the car come around here to the section fold this under tuck this and you kind of leave that just there for right now come around here to this section here you can then fold this kind of out a little bit just kind of loosen that up this whole front section here you want to kind of pull this out and forward like that do that on this side as well you got a couple different hinges in there that allow you to fold that all the way out just to kind of get things out of the way and if you want to right now you can rotate his head around and kind of set it right there you're going to fiddle with it later on but you can do that now if you want take these little pieces fold these up so you do see some similar elements like i was talking about come down here to the arms you have this section you want to pull these out rotate that out do that on this side as well kind of angle these out of the way and then take this tuck this under just like that and then this whole section comes up and tucks underneath which is really nice a lot of the figures that we've gotten in the past just kind of has it sitting here on the back this actually tucks up underneath kind of forming his torso bit and then you can bring these down oh well take these 
fold these out you're going to use these here in a second fold those out like that fold this piece down and then hinge this in this whole middle section here is actually made out of die cast which is nice it adds some stability to it fold this whole section in and then you can see you got a little slot that's uh get this up little slot right here that this piece is going to fold and tab into so as you're recording that down that's going to sit right there give that a nice little push to kind of line that up you get that there we go push that in and then you bring this whole section and uh, well if you didn't do that right you bring that down that will lock into place and then, like i said make sure you give this little piece here a good little squeeze locking that in very nicely again keep these arms out of the way fold these little bits back now this part can be a little bit tricky on the inside of that piece that you lift it up you got a little hole and then a little slot you can kind of see that right there that's going to lift up and lock in here but it's tricky to do because you got to get both of those kind of locked in there so bring that up and make sure you're looking at the top section here right underneath his armpit when you see the tab on the inside kind of pushing through this outer section then you know you have it fiddle with it till you get it into the proper alignment and but once you're done that secures it in really very very nice uh, now i've messed up a lot of other stuff in the process of trying to get it lined up but uh, straightening everything out here going to rotate these arms around just like that then you can fiddle with these you can fold this back you got a little tab here that's going to lock into the bottom section just like that it's a little friction tab just give that a nice little push secures that kind of fold these little wheels back like that and then you can fiddle with the wings here in a little bit come down here to the legs now the legs are actually fairly involved in of themselves then come around here you want to take this back section detach this and slide that out just like that and then again kind of lift this away separate that just kind of clear things up pull this out like that and then you want to extend the leg down now moving this piece out clears this up so extend that as far down as you can just like that locking that down take this piece right here rotate this and you can then angle that again fiddle with that later on fold this out fold the little foot out like that let's see where's that this little piece here get this off to the side and then this whole piece will swivel down you got some more die cast right here on this little joint and then this piece right there then take the wheel rotate this detach this from the side rotate this around getting this kind of out of the way take this piece right here rotate that towards the bottom and then you got this little flap right here that comes up gonna rotate this around and then line it up with the little rectangular hole on the inside of the tire so just kind of swivel that around give that a little push bring that piece back fiddle with the foot then you can take this collapse this in you got a little tab on the inside here that locks in there bring that around push that in and then this whole section pushes up and then collapses down and that forms his leg a lot going on there it's really quite impressive engineering though uh, honestly I'm, I'm really happy with how that turned out so again doing it on this side we're going to lift this back section up and away from the body then take this piece you can rotate this out lift this away a little bit and then extend that down just enough to get this little section here to clear everything so pull that and then you can fold this down pull the foot out you can keep that out like that again straighten all this fold the little foot out rotate the tire around line everything up nicely this whole section here is what swivels so make sure you rotate this around first and then rotate this little tab around till you get it to lock into the inside of the tire take this little back section fold this and then straighten out the legs rotate this piece around angle that kind of straighten everything out rotate this back around tab this in along the side collapse this up and then back down again just kind of 
fiddle with things make sure the legs are the right length sometimes you don't have them fully extended and you want to make sure that you do that properly and then come around here to the arms open this up you got this little sort of nub here that helps you to kind of grab it rotate that around then bring that back in locking that into place you can then rotate his little arm around the fist will already be in the proper position do that as well here rotate this around and fold out his finger and then collapse this down just like that tab that in right there where's it? there it is tab that in keep that positioned straight then you're just basically cleaning them up and uh, fiddling with them to get them to look proper the last pieces I guess you could kind of say are his little collarbones those fold out there along the side kind of just fiddle with those to get those looking fairly cool and then balancing him uh, he does re require a little bit of finesse in the balancing department uh, the feet have a tendency to want to kind of lean back some but get that like that again you're just kind of fidgeting with him a little bit but when you're done there you have Bumblebee in his very cool looking robot mode. And without question, this version of Bumblebee is the best transforming Bumblebee figure that we have ever gotten from the movies. This just blows away every version that has ever come before him. Whether it be deluxe size, a leader, human alliance, whatever. This is absolutely phenomenal now in my opinion the best version in terms of robot mode for bumblebee that we've ever gotten is still that 3a figure that just perfectly captures his cgi look but obviously that doesn't transform this does and i'm just blown away by this I mean, the sheer level of detail, the heft that he has. The yellow looks really very nice, but what you also don't, don't really even notice is the great detail in color that they got for the black. It's not just the black. There, there's a kind of metallic wash to everything on it, especially like here in the gears. You can kind of see a, a bronzish kind of color in it, uh, even up here in the thighs and such. I mean, it's got a very nice kind of two-tone kind of look to it. Just a, a amazing amount of detail. Now, as you do see, he does actually have a little bit of a, a problem balancing. Uh, you do kind of have to bend his legs a little bit, uh, but he does get a little bit top heavy now he does have these pieces right here that help but the problem comes in th these bits right here uh, actually do pivot a little bit so bear in mind that my table is a little bit rounded so it is a little bit more tricky to kind of get him to stand uh, if i set him here more in the back where he's or where the table's a little bit flatter it's a little bit easier as i move it closer uh, it does have a tendency to kind of flop back so there is a little bit of finesse when it comes to balancing them but just taking a look first uh, at, I guess, as his accessories, uh, as I was showing you, his little stinger cannon has a little tiny peg right there. You can come around to the back, and this little section right here has a little hole. You can take this and plug that right there. I don't really like that, to be totally honest. I wish there was a way um, that you could plug it down here a little bit more. Um... And I don't really, I, I don't see any way that you can actually do it. But it would have been cool if you actually could just fill this little section right up by putting that right there. I, I think that would have been really cool if they could have done that. As it is, you're stuck uh, displaying him with it on this little little uh, bit right here. And it, it's, it's not too bad because you've got the little uh, lower wings kind of hanging out. But I think that would have been a nice place to kind of put it. But you can also use it for his weapon. So first what you do, you can run to the other side, detach this piece again, rotate the hand back and in like so and then let's see i gotta make sure i get it lined up right okay so you bring this in and set that right there and then when you do that you're going to well if i keep it lined up proper let's see 
Set that, there we go. Get that in there, and then you have the two little hole sections right here, so now instead of having it be back like so, you have to actually shift it up a little, and then it tabs in right there. And now you have his arm cannon, which, uh, you know, th there, there is a little bit of parts forming involved in it, but I actually really do appreciate that because it doesn't take away the look of his arm or his hand. You can still get that cannon look. Which is cool. I, I, I mean, I don't particularly care that much about it. But I do like the way that they actually did incorporate it. I think that that was a really cool way of doing it. And, um, well, you got to put his hand back, Paul. So rotating that back out and around. And then his other feature is he does have his battle mask. For that, all you do is you come around here to the top section. You have to detach this. Uh, it is a little bit tricky to do because it tabs in to the actual mask itself. So you do want to make sure that you lift that separate and then you have the mask right here that then has a hinge and folds out covers his face just like so and then you can take this fold that back down and there's his battle mask definitely has a, a bumblebee kind of look to it so i do like the fact that that's all incorporated into the actual head itself and then fold that back it is a little bit different than how it kind of normally is but i don't mind and then staying zoomed in to take a look at the details great great likeness on the actual face got a little tiny autobot logo actually painted on his crest and then again staying in to see the detail i, I love all the molded detail you can see it all molded and sculpted and very nicely painted here in the arms i love the fact that you have this little piece that does come up and kind of fill in the gap there and you can see some gears and such right in there uh, i like how all this compresses very very nicely like i was talking about you got a lot of really cool color going on here you can see some kind of bronze some you know gunmetal gray some blacks all blended in there very very nicely given in a very uh, realistic look obviously you have his license plate which matches well you can't see it now but it, it does match very nicely with the license plate that he had in uh, his vehicle mode great paint like i was saying here with the arms nice detail you do have his hands i'll go over the articulation here in a bit great look for his legs i love the way these all come out still not 100 percent accurate when you come around here to the back these actually should be part of his butt but yeah, i think that it actually works pretty good Good down here uh, also in terms of accuracy they still don't necessarily have these right but it is one of the very first times if i remember correctly that we've gotten an actual toy that has the lower wings there uh, i do wish you could rotate them around it almost looks because there's a little screw right here it almost looks like they you, you, you could have had it rotate um or does it rotate i'm trying to see that feels like it um no, that's, uh, yeah, that's all just molded in there. But uh, it would be nice if that could rotate around. But again, you come around here and you can see nice sculpted detail in the back. The legs just look absolutely terrific. Uh, I'm trying to feel, these actually feel like they're die cast as well. So you have some die cast right there. You got that spine piece that's die cast. You got some die cast right down here for his shins. This little bit right here is a die cast piece. And then his feet are. So there is, oh, and then also the little uh, silver section right here is die cast. So he does does have a, a degree of heft which looks really very good i love also how he's got his little collar pieces right there it's just an amazingly detailed figure that as i said we have never gotten before i, I also love how they got the the feet to kind of look i mean you, you it, these are a little bit longer than they should be but he did have little stabilizers that came back and then you got the little stabilizer here in the outer section so i mean amazing amount of detail on this figure it, it just really does completely blow me away <laughs> for some comparisons it's really kind of pointless to honestly do it but you got a couple deluxe figures here that as you can see the new movie masterpiece one is a little bit bigger but these guys really good toys on their own just you you just see the shortcomings so much when you look at these it's just night and day and then because I so rarely get to bring out some of these other characters, here he is next to the leader class Ironhide and obviously the Voyager class uh, Ratchet. Th these are the figures that I have in my movie display. The Battle Blades Bumblebee is the figure that I had with Bumblebee, er, with him as well. Uh, this just works so very nicely. The scale is so much nicer. I mean, he's small, but it, he should be. And then when you look at him next to Optimus Prime, 
And granted, this is the Revenge of the Fallen leader, but as I said, these are the figures that make up my movie display. You can see that Bumblebee and Optimus here look great together. Now for his articulation, the head just is on a swivel, so you can rotate that left and right, but it also does, uh, I mean, you got the little transformation section right here, he does have a hinge that allows him to look up and down, uh, it kind of makes his little helmet come up, but he can look up to about that far, and then he can also look down fairly decently, and then you can kind of flex this a little bit maybe getting them looking a little bit further down but uh, good range of motion I do kind of wish it was a ball joint but it works really nicely the shoulders here on part of the transformation joint have a hinge that go up and down a little bit but then he also does have a primary hinge right here so you can move it out get that out of the way about that far very very nicely he also does rotate 360 degrees he does get a little bit of a junk here in the back so it does limit some of it he's got a nice swivel here at the elbow he bends at about 90 degrees and then he also does have this little joint here that allows a little outward motion which is kind of a weird joint because you got the shoulder i don't know why his elbow needs to swivel outward but it does. I also like that these little pieces right here can articulate out to give a little bit of more flair for the figure. Uh, the little wings can articulate. You can move the little wheel piece forward and back, and then these can obviously move uh, forward. They can kind of, as part of the little transformation, kind of can angle down a little bit. Uh, I mean, he did have that a couple times where his wings were down kind of when he was sad more than anything. So you can actually give some personality to the wings which I really do dig uh, coming back down to the hand you can rotate it at the wrists the fingers are individual articulated uh, the thumb has a main joint and then a secondary joint unfortunately it can't rotate I wish it could uh, just because as it is when you straighten out his hand that's how it is. Uh, I have seen other figures for Bumblebee just have that and not have the rotation. I don't know why they don't bother putting a rotation there, but they don't. And then the fingers here, uh, the bottom two fingers are fused together, but you do have a middle joint and then a primary joint that can bend. But like I said, they're fused together, so it's like they're stuck like that. And then the index finger is individually articulated at the main knuckle and then secondary knuckle as well. Come down to the waist, he does have a nice waist rotation now these little pieces here again I, I, I fiddled with it but you can pivot these and kind of create a, a different look for his chest if you really want but obviously that's more his uh, style uh, the hips here are on nice ratchet joints as you can hear these little pieces here can flex around they also can rotate as part of the transformation so you can move that around nice soft ratchet joints moving in and out you can rotate him at the upper part of the thigh he's got uh, he's got two joints at the knee but primarily he is only really going to need to use one joint just to kind of rotate that around. Uh, the ankles, though, have a lot of articulation, almost to a, a fault for the figure. You can hinge in and out with them, and then, like I was showing you before, they also can pivot a little bit like that. Uh, now, and, well, and it can kind of detach that, so kind of be careful with it. Uh, as I said, that kind of creates a, a problem with some of his stability issues. Uh, he does have a tendency on a less than ideal surface to want to fold back, and that's mostly because of that little extra hinge right there. So as I said, you do need some finesse when kind of standing him up. He's not bad on a flat surface. Uh, you can get it, but as I said, it, it does take a little bit of time to get it looking perfect. And then also he does have a little, I keep pulling that piece out, so keep that tab then. Uh, the foot does flex a little bit, and then it also does rotate. So you can get a fairly good wide stance with them for some really cool you know, dynamic action poses. So all the articulation that you really could want is definitely there in them. Uh, and I, I do think, like I said, that he is the best version of Bumblebee that we've ever gotten. I really do love the way that this guy turned out. Now for his transformation back, a lot of times I talk about how one transformation is usually easier than the other. And that's definitely the case with this guy. Transforming to his robot mode, I feel, is the easier of the two experiences. So I'm going to do my best to go as slow as possible and really zoom in to, to show you how everything lines up 
perfectly. First, very easily, all you have to do is lift this piece and then rotate his hands back in the little cavity. Collapse that back down. It's probably the easiest part of the transformation back. So, well, it's not that difficult, but you know what I mean. So get that and then let's see rotate that around kind of want to make sure that uh, when you have the elbow bent you have the hand in the proper sort of position that a, a normal hand would be and then you can rotate that back making sure that the fingers are out of the way so that you can tab that all the way in and then you close that off just like so and then uh, straighten out his head again another really easy step is put these little tiny collarbones back alongside uh, the lower section of his neck now let's get a little bit more detailed coming in a little bit closer for the legs come around here to the back we want to lift this piece just like that and then separate it and swivel it off to the side like so you can come down here to the foot you can detach this little lower section swivel that out of the way and then take this piece and rotate that up just like that when you have that you can then separate this and rotate this all the way around and basically it'll line up perfectly where you tab it along the side of his the lower portion of his leg come around here this part though is where things get a little bit tricky fold in the foot and then bring this up you want to move this out of the way for right now and then bring this all the way up kind of pushing this along the outer section when you do that you can then keep this I don't want you to get that like that keep that out there a little bit and then you can collapse the whole leg it's on a double hinge and it collapses down into the leg like so get this should have had to rotate this so rotate that piece around kind of at first just get that out of the way and then collapse that all the way up then you can bring this up again kind of leaving this kind of on the side and I still had that the wrong way so rotate this around position like that and you're bringing this all up you can see how this kind of lines back up and then this piece here goes on the inside of the leg just like that bring this down and then you can kind of clean this up straighten this tab that there and then this will come down should be fairly clean if you have everything kind of pushed up and then this whole piece right here brings or comes around and actually sits kind of on an angle there hopefully you can see that pretty decently and then this actually kind of you you can kind of see on the side here there's a little bit of a gap you kind of want to make sure this fits right up there it sits fairly perfectly so again you're kind of just finessing it all back into place so again let's do it on this side we're going to separate this outer section get that hand out of the way separate that away just like so you can hinge this piece up and again kind of clear this out of the way come down here to the foot detach this little piece rotate this section up and then you can take this and swivel this all the way around and that will tab along the outer section you can then rotate this around so that the little tabs are facing the bottom you got well no you want the yeah like that and then you can kind of hinge from here as long as this piece is out hinge that up and then you can kind of bring this around like so once you get that all hinged in there properly it's like i said a tricky process but fairly easy you just kind of rotate until you get everything in a lined up kind of position similar to that so once you have that well i probably could have did this fold this in and then you bring this whole piece down like so and then you bring that down and around and this piece then comes over and you could see that lined up a little bit easier for me so once you have that like that you can kind of put this together uh, you don't really need to just yet because you're going to have to bring the little roof section down and over but so then come around here to this whole section you can then take this piece you want to detach this swivel that down at the side do that on this section as well swivel that down then you can take this whole torso bit here and you can detach this and this whole section will then accordion forward just like so then bring this back 
it out. Get those kind of out of the way. Bring that out. Fold all of this. Fold this out. Fold this out. And then you can bring this all the way down and over. And again, you're going to put all this together down here. So just line everything up. There you go. Just put that in there like that. And yeah, so okay. So now that lined up a lot better and you're able to squeeze everything and you can see how that whole section kind of shifts up to where the uh, kind of exhaust would be. So then again, just straighten all this. You can see some bits come undone, not that big of a deal. Can come around here, take the head. You can rotate this around just like so. Now this part here, I actually like taking the arms in, bringing these all the way down and around. And this little piece right here, does get a little bit tricky, but uh, rotate that. One thing that you need to pay very close attention to, as you bring this up, you wanna make sure that this is kind of on an angle like this. And it's very difficult to see this, but on this piece right here, there's a little tab. I don't know how well you're gonna see that. There's a little tab that kind of juts out. So on this little uh, black section, this actually pushes up and will tab in to the actual arm. So just gotta find that little slot, give that a little push, and that actually will lock that arm into place. I keep fiddling with it, but uh, you do have to get that locked up just like that. So come around to the other side, and again, we're gonna do that over here. So bring this around, rotate this, angle that up and tuck that up and under get these little wheels out of the way tuck that up and under bring that all the way up lock this so you got that little black bar right there that's what has a little tab on the underside that you just find the little slot on the arm and lock that up so now the arms are going to be positioned like so you can then straighten everything out rotate this piece down all right if that didn't already come down that's going to tab in that's going to tab in you can take the front section you can collapse this in and around just like that rotate the windshield down tab that right down like so again making sure everything is staying lined up pretty decently rotate this down oh i'm sorry take this piece you want to detach that Rotate that out like so on both sides. Do that on that side as well. Bring this around. This piece then shifts forward and will lock in towards the front. So bring that there. And then you got a little tab in a, a slot section on the inside of the door that you'll bring in. And this, again, th this does get a little bit tricky to make sure that you have everything lined up. So. Bring that up, find that little slot, give it a little push, make sure that locks in there, give everything on this side a bit of a squeeze to line all the panel lines up. Looking good on that side, so let's do it on this side. Bring that in, that will shift right there. Give that a little push, you can see that's detaching a little, so keep that pushed in, and yeah, well, there we go. Give that a little pull to line that little tab up. Kind of squeezing and pushing to get it to line up. It, it's tricky, there we go. Just gotta get it to shift in there. Keep all this pushed up nicely. Again, give everything a good solid look through. Squeezing everything, squeezing the actual tires and making sure those because you can see those can detach make sure those stay nice and pushed in those are nice and pushed in you can then take his weapon bring it around like i said you got the little prongs right here kind of put that in right in there fold that up and under and there you have bumblebee back in his vehicle mode but as i said in the beginning i really do feel that this bumblebee is the best transforming movie version of the character that we have ever gotten. Yes, in terms of vehicle mode, he's not 100% accurate to how he looked in the film. He's a lot more based on the production version of the Camaro than how he looked as a concept one. But I'm 
perfectly okay with that. I still think his look comes across obviously as Bumblebee. And then with the transformation, as I said, there are a lot of elements that do feel very familiar, which does make them pretty fun to transform because as you're doing it, you're like, oh, this feels like something I've done before. And then there's a slight twist. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool, which I really do appreciate. It's a fun transformation. And then when we get to that robot mode, it's just all hands on deck. He looks terrific. There's a few aspects that I do think the overall design of the CGI made almost impossible to recreate in terms of a toy, such as you know, the taillights going up to his butt. I think that's a cheat in the CGI, you know, and just having parts basically relocate but not actually be attached to where they're supposed to be coming from. So I'm forgiving about that. I do wish the little tiny lower wings did have some articulation to kind of get them rotated around and positioned a little bit better. But as I said, that's the first time that we've ever gotten those on a figure. So kudos to them for finally doing it. All in all, this is a terrific, terrific figure. I am absolutely thrilled to have him and I could not recommend him enough to you guys. Now, all that being said, here in the United States, he is a Toys R Us exclusive. I think MSRP is about 80 bucks, and I'm actually okay with that. He is a masterpiece level figure, and for a smaller character such as Bumblebee, I feel 80 bucks works good. Now, the only thing that I personally would love is if they did more versions of these. Like, I would love a classic Camaro version. More importantly, though, I would love a slightly remolded version of this guy to give us the Dark of the Moon look. And honestly, I don't think it would be that difficult to do. I mean, paint him up a little bit differently and then change up the front section. Boom, you have the Dark of the Moon Bumblebee. But as it is, this one is amazing. So all that being said, he should be hitting various retail locations fairly soon. Or here in the United States, as I said, he will be at Toys R Us in the not so distant future. So if you're looking for him, good luck and happy hunting. But beyond that guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, to please smash that thumbs up button. It goes a long way towards helping me out, and I would really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. It's free, and you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video, and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you're already subscribed, do me a real quick favor and click on that bell right below this video. And double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, to all are one.